Okay, let's talk about everyone's favorite topic, and that, of course, is fractions. And I know a lot of you out there saying, fractions, this video is about fractions. You're just so happy. You're like, I can't wait. Maybe your hair is standing up. And you're like, oh, I love fractions. Well, that's excellent. So let's uh, go ahead and get into what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about how to uh, change mixed number fractions, and this is a mixed number fraction, into an improper fraction. Okay, this is important. And we're going to need to know uh, how to do this. Now, 99.9% .9 of you already learned this. Okay, You may have forgotten uh, how to do this, and it's not that difficult, difficult at all. So I'm going to go through and uh, uh, do a little quick refresher on the procedure to change a mixed number fraction to an improper fraction. And then we'll do a few practice problems. But um, we're also going to talk about the definition of what a mixed number fraction is, an improper fraction, and a proper fraction, because um, these various descriptions of fractions are important. But uh, we're going to get to, by the way, let me just say, if you know how to do this, you're like, I already know what you're talking about. Go ahead and put, do this and put your answer in the comment section, and we'll compare notes here in a second. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program uh, in the description of this video. But if you are struggling with math, maybe you don't think you're good at math. I'm here to tell you it doesn't have to be that way. I've been teaching math for decades, and I've seen enough turnaround stories. Uh, I really haven't seen a bad math student. Okay, I've seen students that think they're bad at math, but if you have the desire to learn math, there is a way to get you to do to get you to improve and get you to be uh, successful. Now, of course, it's all relative. There's some some of you out there are going to go on and become engineers or mathematicians, yeah, but you don't have to go to that level. But you can definitely be successful what, whatever course you're taking right now. Okay, so the way I approach mathematics is I break things down in very very clear. Uh, and understandable bite-sized pieces so everyone can be uh, successful in math. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level, you definitely want to check out my math help program. Now, uh, if you're preparing for any kind of test that has a, a uh, math section on it, so I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Accuplacer, CLEP exam, maybe a teacher certification exam, I have outstanding test prep uh, courses that can help you prepare and pass those exams if you homeschool. I have fantastic homeschool math courses and uh, curriculum. Uh, and uh, if you don't have any math notes, listen, I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. But if you want to be successful and have great grades in math, you need to learn how to take great math notes. So start improving your math notes and you'll see your grade just uh, skyrocket. All right, let's get into uh, fractions, everyone's favorite topic. And I know you're just like, wow, okay, let's get into this. All right, let's get into this now. Okay, so we're talking about fractions. Let's go ahead and get some definitions down. So I have proper, uh, improper, and mixed numbers. So what we're doing in this video, we're talking about how, go, how to go from a mixed number fraction to an improper fraction. But what is a proper fraction? What is an improper fraction? And um, what is a mixed number fraction? Well, let's just quickly talk about this. So a proper a fraction is something like two-thirds, and the improper fraction is something like five uh, halves, and a mixed number fraction is something like three and two-sevenths. So I wrote these down because by if you just look at these, you can kind of tell the difference, hopefully, right? So what's different between a proper and improper fraction? Well, if you're picking up uh, on the fact that the numerator uh, for a proper fraction is smaller than the denominator, well, then you would be absolutely right. So anytime this top number, which is called the numerator, is smaller than this bottom number, which is called the denominator, that's a proper fraction. Now, when the numerator, in this case, it's 5, okay, when it's greater than the denominator, like this, okay, like 5 halves, well, this is an improper fraction. And we can take improper fractions and convert them into mixed numbers, right? That's a separate video, but just real quick, what we're going to do is take that numerator and divide it by the denominator, and we can uh, rewrite an improper fraction as a mixed number, okay? So a mixed number fraction is something like this. We have 3 and 2 uh, sevenths, and we could take this fraction and write this as an improper fraction. And that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. So I kind of basically uh, told you how we can go from an improper to a mixed number, but uh, we're going to be focused in specifically uh, on how to rewrite a mixed number as an improper fraction. 
Okay, so let's get to it. It's not that difficult. We all learned it way back in the good old days. I think I learned this maybe in the year 1978, maybe, 79, whatever the case was. It was pretty cool going to elementary school in the 1970s because uh, I do remember my first grade teacher smoking there in Southern California. Uh, it was pretty crazy stuff. Anyways, let's get into this. So we have four and two-thirds. Um, how do we do this? Okay, well, here is how we... Let me actually rewrite this a little bit clearer, okay? So we're gonna, I'm going write to write it this way. Four and two-thirds. So stylistically, let me actually do this a little bit better. Uh, four and two-thirds. Whether you write your fractions this way, like two-thirds or two-thirds, um, it doesn't make a difference on its surface. Okay, so if you've been used to writing fractions like this or like this, um, either way is fine. However, I'm going to um, suggest that you get used to kind of using a straight uh, horizontal fraction bar. Okay, just kind of makes things a little bit easier. That slash, although there's nothing technically wrong with it, I kind of uh, interchange the two from time to time. But when we see this little horizontal uh, fraction bar like that, it's a little bit easier to see this. So what we do to go from a mixed number fraction to a uh, proper fraction or improper fraction, excuse me, is we take this little denominator, okay, three, right here, we're gonna multiply it by the big number. And by the way, you know, this number, you write it bigger than this little fraction. So that's gonna be three times four. Okay, we're gonna multiply here, and then we get that result. What is that? Well, that's gonna be 12, okay? And then we're going to add this top number. Okay, so I don't wanna, uh, you know, write this where it's confusing. I think it's just uh, easier for me to just show you. So three times four is 12. Okay. We'll put that there. And then we add this number two. That is our numerator. And then we just keep this as our denominator. Okay. So three times four is 12 plus this little number right here, two is uh, going to be 14 over three. Okay. Let's do this. Uh, more than a few times. Now, I'm going to do this again over here. So four and two thirds. I'll keep this with the slash here, the little vertical uh, slash. So you're going to go, okay, three times four is 12. 12 plus two is 14 over, and then you keep this little denominator three. Okay. All right. So hopefully, you know, uh, yeah, you're not confused with this because it's a pretty direct, straightforward procedure. So if you understand that, let's go ahead and practice this. Uh, with these few problems here, just to make sure you got this down. So here we go. Here is three problems. I would suggest you pause the video, go ahead and uh, write your answers down. If you want to put them in the comment section, that's fine as well. But we're going to do these three problems here real quick, and then we'll wrap up this video. All right, so uh, did you pause the video and uh, do these problems? It's better that you uh, do the problems instead of uh, watch me do the problems first, but I'm gonna go ahead and answer this right now. So let's get to it. So two and one half, let's write this mixed number fraction as a improper fraction. So it's gonna be two times two, which is four, plus one is going to be five halves. Okay, so we got that right. Let me give you a nice little check mark. Let's move on to our next problem. Okay, so three, times three, which is what? Nine plus two is 11. Okay, so nine plus two is 11 over that little three right there. And that is the answer, 11 thirds. All right, so this is not that difficult. And if you can't do some of this mental math, then break it down and, you know, uh, write. Just remember, it's always multiplication. Okay, then you get that answer, then you're going to add it to that little uh, numerator over there, okay? So it's multiplication, oops, uh, multiplication first and then addition. All right, let's finish up with this last problem. Nine times five is what? 45, 45 plus one is 46 over nine. Now, one thing that you wanna keep in mind, by the way, if you got that right, then that's excellent, is when you get your final answers, uh, always reduce. So if you end up with something like four, uh, uh, well, let me just do something a little better. Let's say you had 12 thirds as your final answer. Okay, which of course, yeah, in this uh, situation, what are you going to have? Well, 12 divided by uh, 3 is 4, so that's a, that's a bad example. But I guess, let me just not even try to make up an example right now because nothing good is coming to mind. 
The thing is this, always look at your answers when you're done with fractions and make sure you can fully simplify. Always reduce your answers. Never leave something like 500 over 1,000, turn that in because your teacher will be like, come on now, uh, give me a break. Just call that one half, right? You always want to reduce and simplify. But uh, if, uh, you know, if you've been having trouble changing mixed number fractions into improper fractions, again, you know, it doesn't have to be that difficult. What I think is difficult for students is they confuse things. They're like, oh, yeah, I, I, I forgot that. Or they'll do another procedure for something else. They'll start mixing things up. And that is the result of um, not practicing enough or not getting clear instruction, not taking good notes, not being organized, okay? But certainly not practicing because it's one thing to mentally look at something or visually look at something and be like, oh, I understand that. I remember that. Well, you're not going to retain that unless you practice. And you got to practice a considerable amount. Remember, math is a skill. It's just like um, it's, it's the same thing as if you were going to shoot, you shot a basketball. You're like, oh, look, I made the uh, basketball hoop. I made it. Therefore, I must um, be super good at shooting basketballs. And I bet you if I shot this basketball a thousand times, I would get this hoop every single time, right? Well, that's not the case, right? Just because you did one problem and got lucky doesn't mean that if you did 10, 12, 20, 40, 100, you're going to be able to, you know, keep that skill up. So you got to practice. Math is a skill. But uh, hopefully this little video helps you out. And if that is the case, go ahead and consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years. I have over a thousand plus math videos on my channel. It's a huge amount of work that, um, you know, it's been a, a real pleasure to make all this content. So it's basic stuff to advanced stuff like calculus and everything in between. But my goal is to help you um, be successful in mathematics. Okay. I really try to teach in the clearest, most understandable way so everyone can get this stuff. But you got to be willing to put your part in as well. So if you have the desire uh, to learn, then, you know, I could definitely help you out. But uh, my best math help will always be within my math help program. And uh, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.